one of those things is we could put on one of those adjustable stems that could get you your camera <laughs> back. I would get trolled to death. <laughs> Just take that one like that, mate. That'll get you. <laughs> Just absolute dickhead. Just ridiculous. How could you not be thinking? Thousands of dollars. You're gonna get a new fork, you need a new bike, what are you gonna need? You don't even know because you don't even know much about bikes and you pretend to. The stupid YouTube channel. So, I have been heckled in the comments a lot recently, and rightfully so. After my recent bike fit with Neil Stanbury, the expert bike fitter who's been on the channel a fair bit recently, we lowered my handlebars by 10 millimeters, leaving what was essentially a 20 millimeter chimney on top of the BMC team machine. And some of the comments I received from people out there were as follows, including people really getting behind the heckling liking the comments and some people even throwing out a good old fashioned riddle. Chimneys on BMC stems are not cool and won't get you a super nice. You're leaving me hanging, Captain Pugwash. <laughs> but I get it, 20 millimeters is not a good look. And the reason why I left it there for so long, and this is where the irony comes into the story, what could potentially be a monster stuff up. You see, I was waiting for some new cranks to get installed on the BMC team machine at my local bike shop, Trilogy Cycles, and I've been waiting some time for these parts to arrive. So the chimney has been present on the BMC team machine for quite some time. However, now that I've cut it off, this is where I may have just wrecked my BMC team machine as it stands today for my purposes anyway. You're a bloody flaming galah, that's what you've turned into a galah. Now I know what some of you may be thinking or want answers to. Surely I would know if I've completely cocked this up before shooting this video, but I don't yet know. And there's some interesting technical detail I'll share with you shortly. You see, I was getting new cranks installed on the BMC team machine, which were the 165 millimeter quark cranks, replacing the old 172.5 millimeter cranks. And this was completed directly before I asked Dylan from Trilogy Cycles to knock the top off the chimney. So you now might be starting to figure this out. The cranks have a 7.5 millimeter differential. So I'm actually gonna to have to move the seat up and it could be more than 7.5 millimeters, which I'll explain for you why shortly. So essentially what I've done in one hit is I've moved the back end of the BMC, the seat up, and I've chopped off the front. So the front's gone down and the back's gone up. And this is where the giant dickhead move comes into place. Now, before we narrow in on this mistake, Let's briefly discuss the chimney and the unwritten rules surrounding the amount of length that you should leave. And really this gets broken into two parts. The first part is the section below the handlebar. And from what I have seen in online forums and speaking with Neil Stanbury, the expert bike fitter, you really don't want more than 30 millimeters of spaces below the handlebars. Otherwise you start to compromise the bike's intended handling. And number two, above the handlebars. So this is where the chimney comes into play and where we're gonna narrow in on things a little bit more. 
Now, once again, I had to turn to online forums because I couldn't find any reputable cycling websites that talked about this topic in detail. I could be wrong, and if I am, please share some links below. So I turned to a very well-known forum, pulling up the very popular Weight Weenies forum. And there, I found quite a number of mixed opinions and views. In this post, the gentleman is asking the question of his 35 millimeter chimney on top of the Cervelo R5, which is quite a beast. And people responded with cut it, some people say leave five millimeter, and some people are saying leave more. And one bloke says be careful not to cut your finger off. So to add to this, let's hear what Keith, the store owner of Trilogy Cycles has to say on this topic. So we're just discussing the appropriate chimney height. What do you reckon? Mate, look, in my opinion, a slam stem does look sexy. Yes. Uh, the reality of it is when you slam a stem, your resale value drops unless you're selling to someone who's gonna be exactly sized the same as you are. Right. I personally prefer leaving five, 10 more space on top, mate. Right. It gives what, you something to play with. What do most of your customers do? Uh, leave a bit of gap on top. Five, 10? Chin. Yeah. So what do you reckon we leave here, five? Or just, what do you reckon we slam it? I reckon leave 10, mate. That'd be, <laughs> that'd be my advice. Bike fits are also something that evolve. Yes. Your position on the bike could change. You've slammed the stem, you want to go back up because you're finding shoulder pain. Complaints, yeah. Complaints, you can't do that. Very good point. So, All right. I'd, I'd leave it 10. Now, if I can add another layer on this before we can make an educated assumption about what's right and what's wrong. When I first purchased the BMC Team Machine, I had the handlebars higher, leaving me with 10 millimeters on top, which left me with a more relaxed position given my goals at the time were for a 267 kilometer bike race called the Melbourne to Warrnambool and a relaxed fit for this bike race was ideal. Now, before I dropped the handlebars running the 10 millimeter chimney, I didn't receive any heckling in the comment section on YouTube and if you look with the close eye within the Pro Peloton and also within experienced cycling groups, you'll see that 10 millimeters seems to be acceptable. But I think if there's anything over that 10 millimeter barrier, yes, you're helping with your resale and de-risking the potential of extreme position changes due to whatever reason. However, aesthetically, it's not a good look. So before we narrow in on my crank conundrum, let's do a chimney summary. And let me preface this as it will depend on how much space is left below the handlebars, but as a general rule of thumb, a chimney 10 millimeters or more, there's lots of room for resale. There's plenty of flexibility if your position changes, but expect chimney heckling. If it's 10 millimeters, you've got reasonable room for resale. Most likely enough flexibility for position changes. Not an ideal look, but little to no chimney heckling. Five millimeters, limited room for resale. Questionable if there's enough flexibility if your position changes, but it is aesthetically pleasing to the eyeball. Zero millimeters, good luck selling. You're stuffed if your position changes, but very aesthetically pleasing to the eyeball. So there you have it. Now, what I ended up doing was going with the five millimeter option, which is more aesthetically pleasing and gives me a little bit of flexibility. But when I made this decision, what my intention originally was, was to put this five millimeter spacer below. Reason being, I could completely squash the chimney hecklers with a zero millimeter chimney. And number two, I have recently lost quite a fair bit of flexibility because training is less of a focus as we speak, and I felt raising the handlebars would take some pressure off my neck and shoulders. But as you now know, before we cut the chimney off to suit my current position, with marginal room for any significant position changes, Dylan from Trilogy Cycles installed the new cranks on my bike, and I was simply not thinking. I was just too focused on cameras and content at the time. Yep, I know. So the 172.5 millimeter cranks were converted to 165. Following the change of cranks, I got home and I emailed Neil Stanbury to inform him that I had the new cranks on the bike and he responded, telling me to raise my seat by five millimeters to accommodate the crank changes. God damn it. But some of you may be asking, why five millimeters if the crank length change is 7.5 millimeters? 
I was certainly thinking that, and it was something that I dug into with Neil over the phone only last night. And he explains that it comes down to my hip impingement and what effect the new cranks will have on my hip rotation. He said he typically gets clients to start at five millimeter increase in seat height, but it could be up to a 10 millimeter increase in seat height. So we've knocked off and I really wish I kept the piece, but at the time I wasn't thinking this was gonna happen, just over 15 millimeters off the steerer tube. And I just may have to raise my seat 10 millimeters when all I left at the front was five millimeters for when cam becomes inflexible, which is inflexible cam right now, which may just mean I might need to start doing a fair bit of yoga to ensure I don't have to go to extreme measures to rectify this silly move. Now this all happened on Monday this week, and today it is Wednesday, and my wife is currently away, which means I have the kids, so I have not been able to get outside and test the new cranks, the seat position changes, etc. And all I've done at this stage is jump on the trainer for 20 minutes and the trainer is too hard to tell what is actually going on. I really need to get outside and it's gonna be probably another 48 hours before I'm able to do so and really assess what's going on here. Have I really messed things up? So I think we've all learned a lesson today, haven't we? Well. I certainly have anyway, and this clearly isn't the end of the story. So there will be a follow-up piece to this to conclude with what I need to do to either salvage the chimney chop or whether I've actually dodged a bullet. So if you're interested in learning where this goes, and if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do it below and hit the bell notification to ensure you get notified when I publish a video. I'm gonna be onto this topic very quickly. And to conclude this video, what I wanna do is leave on a positive note because it hasn't been very easy for me to express or articulate myself here because it's a bit of a silly move, but it's a move we should all be aware of. What I'm gonna leave you with here is some scenes on Sundays. I take my kids when mummy's out doing her Sunday run, we go to the local Noosa farmer's market. It's considered to be an essential service. We go there, we have a bite to eat and get some fresh food. It's a great place to be. I'll catch you all in the next video. Start from the top and lay it down on me. Say what you want, don't hold it back for me. Cause I